Hi, Beth. It's me, your favorite sister-in-law. And today I am doing the video that you asked for. I'm going to go through a step-by-step -step with Alain Ducasse's Gougere recipe. This recipe is such a go-to in our home simply because A, it's easy AF to make. B, if you just take part of an afternoon where maybe the weather isn't that good, like it's really cloudy today, um, you can make a ton of these and freeze them, put them in the freezer, forget about it. And then when you need them, you just take a couple of, of them out, refreeze them in the oven at 350 for five minutes. It's the perfect, perfect little amuse bouche to have when you have guests overs. I'm a guests over. I make these for dinner guests. I make these whenever the kids come over. I make these for every single holiday meal. So you can't go wrong. I'm going to read you the recipe. Now you can get this recipe online at the food and wine um, website. It's Alain, A-L-A-I-N, Ducasse, D-U-C-A-S-S-E, Gougere, G-O-U-G-E-R-E-S recipe. And as I said, it's from food and wine. Now, the ingredients are very, very basic. One half cup water, one half cup whole milk, one stick of unsalted butter, make sure it's unsalted, cut into tablespoons. So you get like maybe six to eight little slices, okay? A large pinch of coarse salt, one cup all purpose flour, four large eggs, three and a half ounces of shredded Gruyere cheese, which comes out to one cup, plus more for sprinkling, freshly ground pepper, freshly grated nutmeg. I make two changes. I don't use nutmeg because Vincent doesn't like nutmeg, so I leave that out. I do add the pepper, and rather than um, Gruyere cheese, I use Jarlsberg cheese because I just like the way it um, it works better. I, I that's my personal preference. So again, you could use any um, hard cheese, just grate it. So now that I have this recipe out of the way, I'll show you how I prepare for this recipe, and we will make them together. Now, in the first place, I need a pastry bag. I have this old tried and true pastry bag. Oh my God, Beth, I've had this since the kids were younger. Um, he does say to use, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. he says to use a half inch round tip, which is what I have. I have a half inch round tip. It fits in here. And to make things easier when I'm loading up the batter into the pastry bag, I always use a larger glass for support. This keeps the pastry bag, oh my bra, this keeps the pastry bag nice and steady. So that's one thing. I also make sure that I shred my cheese in advance. This is a lot more than one cup. I use a little bit more, but I also use the remainder to sprinkle on top of the gougeres. Here's the butter. I already have the butter cut. I've got my eggs. I don't wanna pour them on my computer, but I have my eggs. I have I have a half cup of water and a half cup of milk already at the ready. 
I also have a cup of all-purpose flour. Now, when I'm making these, it's really important, like when you're baking anything, to make sure that all of the ingredients are exact. So what I do when I'm taking the flour and I'm dipping my cup into my big flour bin, I just take one of these scrapers and I even, I even the flour out with this. These are such versatile tools because not only are they used as scrapers, but they're very good at slicing. Um, they're good at slicing dough, like when you're making bread and you want to even out the bread dough, but they're also great for topping off dry measurements. So that's that. Now um, I have my KitchenAid right there at the ready because we're going to be using that. I've already preheated my oven at 400, so that's done. What I'm going to do now is add ingredients into this pan. So I'm adding the water. I'm adding the milk and I'm adding I'm adding the butter. And as we all know, I'm not um I'm not the cleanest cook, so I'll just throw those in the sink. And I'll wait till everything's done and then I'll clean everything. Now I'm going to take my large pinch of salt. I use Morton kosher salt. Here's my large pinch. I'm putting that into the mix and I'll put a little bit more. And then I throw the rest of the salt over my left shoulder. Okay, so now I'm going to bring this over to the stove. Turn the stove on medium high. I'm also going to kind of stir everything with a wooden spoon. I'm going to end up adding the one cup of flour in one fell swoop as soon as everything is blended and starts to simmer a little, okay? I am going to pause this and then I will be back once I put the flour into the mixture and mix it really well, okay? So hold on, I shall return. Whoops. Okay, so we're back. And here is what the shoe pastry is going to look like after you have cooked the flour into the water, milk, and butter mixture. Here you go. It's dry. It's not sticking to the bottom of the pan. So what we're going to do now, we're going to place it. We're going to place it back on the stove, and we're going to let it um, cool off for, I would say, from five to ten minutes. <sighs> you got to use a judgment on this. Usually, I'll do. It depends if I have the time. I'll do 10 minutes if I have a lot of time. If I'm not, if I'm pressed for time, then I'll do five minutes. It doesn't really matter because it's still going to turn out really good. Okay. So, ow, I'm falling off the couch. So, I will be back after five minutes. Hold on. Okay. So, I'm back. The flour mixture is cooled off. Here it is. Now I'm going to walk over here to the KitchenAid. I'm going to put that in. I'm going to add the eggs one at a time because you really need to add them one at a time to make sure they're properly incorporated. Um, 
Don't worry if the batter looks a little wonky while you are kind of mixing it because it's going to get a little wonky and curdly and then it will start to emulsify and then it will be like one good smooth batter and that's when you can add your cheese and your pepper so i'm gonna put this on, i'm gonna put this on um i just use the regular handle you know works fine so let's go can you sit away hold on hold on let's move this so you can see it better okay yeah, there we go, that's better. So, I'm putting this on, I'm adding the eggs one by one. I made sure to lock my kitchen I have it on a medium high setting. I just added the second egg. So, um, you know, like you have to be a little patient because um, it kind of does take a little time for the eggs to completely be absorbed and mixed. But that's okay. Like, where are you going? And yeah, the batter does get a little wonky, but after I add this fourth egg, it's going to be okay. And I will kind of scrape down the sides too. I have my KitchenAid um, thingy spatula. So I'm just scraping down the side. And I'm adding a little bit of a high mix just for about maybe 30 seconds. Now I'm adding the cheese. And to tell you the truth, one of the worst parts of, or actually one of the most challenging parts of making this is when you're scraping everything into um, the pastry bag. Because working with shoe pastry, uh, in my opinion, ooh, that's so bad. Working with shoe pastry, in my opinion, can be kind of messy. So yeah, it is what it is. So hold on a second and I will be right back. Okay, so the cheese has been added, the pepper has been added, and basically here's what the shoe pastry looks like. It's got a nice consistency, so it's nice and thick. So now we're ready. Now we're ready for kind of like the messy part. I guess chefs do this in a way that's a lot cleaner than I do, but hey, you know what? I don't know. So I just take it and I put it into this pastry bag. And trust me, I don't know how professional chefs do this so quickly because I don't think it's the quickest thing to do in the world, okay? I usually do this in two batches because I don't want to overload the pastry bag. So what I'll do 
I'll kind of like squeeze and then I'll twist. Okay. Now for an example, what I do is I get, I have two jelly roll pans that I use for this. And I line them with parchment paper. I am huge on parchment paper. I think lining every all of my cookie sheets and my jelly roll sheet with parchment paper is such a lifesaver. Then I'll just take this, put it like, I won't put it at an angle. I'll kind of get it straight up and down. And I'll just make little dollops, if you will. Now, before I continue the rest, I want to show you something, but hold on a second. I'm taking one of these little, um, like, creme brulee pots. and I'm adding water. Now, as you can see, these look kind of pointy. They don't look round. So what I do is, and my fingers are clean. I washed them, okay? They're clean. I'll take my fingertip, dip it into the water, and I'll just round out the little dollops so that they look more um, dome shaped rather than looking conical. Okay. What's fun about this is that you can put the oven light on and practically watch these babies puff up. And then when I'm done, like turning them into like, hold on like little domes. I missed one here. When I'm done turning them into little domes, that's when I'll take the remainder of the cheese and just top them with some shredded cheese because that's what the recipe says to do. Now, if you're running low on cheese or if you don't want cheese overload, you don't have to sprinkle or place the cheese on the top. So I will be right back um, when I finish putting everything on the cookie sheets and I will show you just what else I do before I put them in the oven. So hold on, I will be right back. Okay, so the oven is preheated to 400 and I have two of my trays of fougeres at the ready to put in to the oven. I have my oven light on because, you know, I like to check things, but this is really important. And as you can see, I have a beautiful head of hair. It's not my bio hair. It's my hair because I bought it, but it's not my bio hair and it's synthetic hair. One thing, if you are a wig wearer, never wear your wig while you're opening up the oven or your hair is going to melt. So I'm taking my hair off. Oh, even my wig cap started coming off too. But don't worry, my wig cap, it won't melt. So I'm taking my trays and I'm putting them into the oven. Voila. Voila. I'm gonna hit the timer. I'm hitting the timer for 28 minutes because Everybody's oven has a different personality. 
And my oven, I don't know, when I have the correct temperature, I have to keep it on a little while longer. Hold on while I put my hair back on. Isn't that better? But anyway, I will be back with the finished product. And in the meantime, I'm gonna clean the fabulous mess that I made. So I will be back. I will see you in a little while. Okay, so I'm back and my hair is on. I have my Gougeres. They're puffed nicely and they are right out of the oven. So, what I'm going to do, and this is so hard. I have a rack. I'm placing it down on the counter. Here it is, being placed. I'm gonna turn around and get the other Gougere. Here we go. And I am going to place them. Here so they can cool off. Hold on, I'm going to actually I'm going to make them a little bit more airy. So that's it. That's that's my Gougere recipe. Um, oh, wait, hold on. If you can see, I placed this in a plastic sheet cover. And what I have is, hold on. I have this binder that has tons of recipes that I've collected over the years. And the ones that I use a lot, I've encased in these plastic sheets simply because I am a slob. I'm not an intentional slob, just happens to be that by nature, I'm just a little messy. So that's it. Why is it that some people are perfect and I'm just not? Like not now, not ever, never. So anyway, that's it. I'm telling you if there's one appetizer recipe that you need to have, this is it because you can make them in multiples. You can make a ton of them at one time and you are going to have them in the freezer at the ready. I mean, honestly, over this summer, I think I made three batches and the three batches lasted from Memorial Day up until now, which is right before Labor Day. Um, the next batch that I make will probably be sometime in November for the holidays. So that's it. So take care, Beth. I hope you enjoyed this video and you know if you have any questions you can always call me. I'll be sending this to you later and I actually think I will be uploading this to my YouTube channel just for the heck of it. That's it. Bye. Take care and happy cooking. Oh wait, I paused it. I meant to stop. Okay, let's do this again. Bye. Take care and happy cooking. Bye. Love you.